Hi guys, this is Jared, and this is Which Holes Can I Birdie Backhand and Forehand at Winstrom Park on the front nine. Hole one is a par three that comes in at 312 feet, although it plays a lot more like 350. For the backhand, I'm reaching for my S-Line PD2, just trying to turn it over and hit the gap and hopefully push far enough to give myself a putt. For the forehand, I'm reaching for my Innova Champ Wraith or maybe a Nuke. I'm turning them over and trying to get it to flex out all the way down there and hopefully finish right by the basket. The backhand flared forward and was about 20 feet to the left of the basket pin high. The forehand was a bit shorter by the tree and this was a lot more like 50 feet so I'm reaching for my Luna instead of my P2. Hole 2 is a little left to right par 3 at 260 feet. For the backhand I'm reaching for my C-Line MD3 just trying to throw it straight and get it turned over and I get a little bit of tree love and I'm parked. We'll try the super cool firebird. For the forehand I'm reaching for one of my firebirds. This one's color glow but it's got a cool dye on it and uh, I'm just trying to hit the gap and make sure that I don't hit any trees and I should be parked. Hole 3 is a pretty tricky rise to drop in elevation par 3 coming in at 235 feet. For the backhand I'm reaching for my C-Line MD this time. I'm just trying to make sure that I leave it on hyzer and I get a little bit of tree love and sure enough I'm parked again. <laughs> just for funsies we'll throw a forehand. Pretty hard to forehand this one but I'm just grabbing a gator and forcing it over and trying to hit the gap and make sure that I keep it low enough so it doesn't get too far away. Easy peasy. The forehand snuck out to about 35 feet and gave me this little Anheuser putt to give myself the birdie. Hole four is a pretty routine hyzer at about 258 feet par three. This one has a tight gap off the tee and finish left. For the backhand, I'm reaching for my ESP Malta, just trying to throw something stable enough through the gap that it will finish to the left and beat that last pesky tree. This is another backhand only hole, and so for the forehand, I'm throwing an MD3, just trying to get sneaky through the trees on the left side because there's no other way to do it. The backhand was parked. And the forehand didn't quite get as sneaky as I thought, so it gave me this tough turnover putt from a knee. And on to hole five. Hole five is another tight gap off the tee, par three, 230 feet left to right, with a small inbounds creek short of the hole and a bigger out of bounds creek beyond the hole. For the backhand, I'm just reaching for my Tour Series Luna from 2020. I'm giving it some turnover and beating those trees and hopefully not going into the creek. And for the forehand, I'm reaching for my trusty gator, just trying to give it enough power to get straight through the gap and finish left to right, letting the disc do the work. Yes. The Luna got pretty lucky and stayed on the hill just shy of the big out-of-bounds creek. The forehand ended up hitting this bush and sticking it right by the basket, but I needed to straddle out and give myself a little left to right and left. Hole 6 is the third longest hole on the course and plays a lot like hole 3 where it goes up in elevation and then down making it literally impossible to birdie with a forehand. And also play more like 430, which means I'm skipping this one and moving on to hole 7. Hole 7 is a par 3 coming in at 325 feet. This one plays right to left. For a backhand you want to throw a hyzer flip that will push straight and then finish left. And for a forehand, it's a very complicated line to the left that you got to beat a lot of trees. For the backhand, I'm reaching for one of my Innova Champion Thunderbirds. This one pushes pretty straight for me. I'm trying really hard to beat that gap on the right. I end up hitting the middle gap instead, and this pushes right to the basket. This is another hole where the forehand doesn't really make a lot of sense, so I'm just grabbing my Innova Star Wraith, and I'm giving it a lot of Anheuser out of the hand for the forehand, 
and hoping to beat all those trees and be up by the basket. This backhand got pretty lucky as I made it through the straight gap instead of the far gap and so I'm on the left side instead of the right side of the basket and here's my short putt. The Wraith beat a whole bunch of trees on the left side, ended up getting through and gave me a look at the basket. Here's another little slight Anheuser putt. And on the hole eight. Hole eight is the easiest hole on the course, coming in at 210 feet, little dinker right in front of you, just throw it right at the basket and you should get it most of the time. For the backhand, I'm reaching for my most trusty throwing putter. This one is a Discraft Big Z Luna. I'm just throwing it right down the gap with just a little bit of turn and hoping it gets all the way up there. <laughs> Speaking of trusty, I'm pulling out old trusty, the old Innova Ring of Gators. This one I'm putting on a lot of Anheuser and just letting it get all the way down there and hoping to sit by the basket. The Luna got stopped by this little log on the ground. It gives me this nice, easy little 10-footer for my birdie. The Gator was just outside of that, coming in at probably 15 feet or so. Nice little tapper for my birdie. The infamous hole nine is coming in at 468 feet, probably more like 500. This one is definitely more of a par four than it is a par three. And there's no way that I can birdie this with a forehand and unlikely with a backhand. So therefore, I'm going to leave this out of this video as well. So to answer the question of how many holes I can birdie both forehand and backhand on the front nine of Winston Park, the answer is seven out of nine, omitting those two longer holes. And that's a wrap for this video. Um, I'm definitely going to come back and do the back nine. Definitely be sure to like and subscribe and check out my channel for more content. Thank you.